Hello, and welcome to the annual State of Small Business event. My name is Aikta Marcoulier, Executive Director of the Small Business Development Center. The Pikes Peak FCBDC offers free consulting, practical training, and business resources for small businesses throughout the region, which includes El Paso and Teller County for our service area. Before I get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors who have stuck with us through this pandemic. Our host, El Paso County Economic Development, Ent Business Banking, the City of Colorado Springs, Park State Bank and Trust, Lumen Technologies, formerly known as CenturyLink, Colorado Springs Utilities, Vector Bank, and the Small Business Administration. I would like to announce that we are so proud that we have won for the National Small Business Week, the 2020 Small Business Administration Region 8 Innovation and Excellence Award, which places our Pikes Peak SBDC in the top 10 out of 1,000 offices nationwide. So today's program is going to be a little bit of devastation because we're going to talk about stats and what happened to our small business community. But we're going to end with some celebratory news. Here's a quote that I found that really epitomizes how small business owners are. Small business isn't for the faint of heart. It's for the brave, the patient, and the persistent. It's for the overcomer. So today I'll be focusing a lot about our COVID relief small business programs. But first, I'd like to start with some statewide statistics. The Colorado of Office of Economic Development and International Trade, Downtown Colorado Inc. and the National Research Center conducted a short survey with the small business community. Although 2,382 businesses were the only amount of businesses that were surveyed, I do believe that the key findings are those that we are still working with. That small businesses saw a decline in revenues that impacted their workforce, that there was a need, immediate need, for short-term capital, information was critical for business recovery, and not all businesses are impacted the same by the pandemic. The report showed that 51% of the respondents were somewhat unprepared and very unprepared. 86 responded that business operations have changed negatively, and this was just a month into the pandemic. 59 experienced at least a 31% in sales reduction. 55% expected a serious shortage in revenue in the projections for 2020. Now, it's really important that I, the SBDC, and our community talks about the minority-owned business in Colorado. 13% of all minority-owned business is Hispanic-owned, which is the ethnic minority. It's also important to talk about the racial minority ownership, which is 34% in the state of Colorado. How that breaks down is that 23% of business ownership is owned by African Americans, 11% by American Indian, Alaska Native, 1% by Native American, Pacific Islander, and 30%, 1% of some other race. Of all the minority-owned businesses, 37% in Colorado are women-owned, 8% are veteran-owned. It's important for us to talk about our LGBTQ community in the United States as well, which is part of our minority office business programming. 909 are certified LGBT business enterprises in the United States that are 12 years in business, employ 33,000 workers who earn 2.5 million each in revenue. Of course, it's also important for me to talk about immigrant owned business. 35,162 immigrant business owners in Colorado account for 10.4% of all self-employed Coloradoans and generate 862 million in business revenue. These are some big businesses, guess what, that started small and they were all started in Colorado and founded by immigrants or their children. So in El Paso and Teller County, let's break it down just a little bit. The racial minority owned by share in El Paso County is 13%. In Teller County, 3%. The Hispanic owned share by county in Teller County is 1% in El Paso County, 5%. The women owned share by county, El Paso County, 41%. Teller County, 47%. Veteran owned share by county, El Paso County and Teller County both coming in at 14%. First obnoxious slide that I'll show you today. 
is one from our minority business office, but I think it's really important. We have a very close relationship with them at the Office of Economic Development. And these are the number of minority organizations that they work with in Region 2, forwarding business for our minorities, assisting with surveys and data. Of course, access to capital for our small businesses during the pandemic was a big hurdle. And it normally is something that we talk about, but during the pandemic, it really was brought to the height of awareness. Communities of color had unequal access to capital. Small businesses in majority white neighborhoods received PPP loans more quickly than small businesses in majority black and majority Latino and Hispanic neighborhoods. Communities, communities of color most cash constrained and are least likely to have existing relationships with large banks because over time we've seen those large banks leave the communities. So they weren't left with many banks to have a relationship with. Communities of color relied on financial tech companies, fintechs, which issued nearly 80% of loans for non-employer small businesses, which is one or two people within a business. Main source of credit was fintech for black owned businesses. Here's the problem. Internet based lenders were not given approval until two days April 14th, before the first round of PPP funds were, delayed, were depleted, that's Paycheck Protection Program funds. Independent contractors and self-employed not eligible, were not eligible for Paycheck Protection Program until April 10th. Okay, so with all of these statistics and need for small business, what was the Pikes Peak SBDC's response? We had immediate virtual services under our preparedness and continuity program, which started way back during the Waldo Canyon fire, came back unfortunately during the Black Forest fire, and now returned during the pandemic. So we went virtual immediately on March 14th. We stood up a COVID-19 core team. We were the first to stand up a resource page in the region, which provided federal, state, and local small business support. We were the first to provide a resiliency series to our small business community. And we provided consultants for all areas of the region, El Paso, Teller County, rural and urban. You can see more about what we provide at pikespeaksbdc.org forward slash prepare. Under our program and services, we offer business assessments, SBA loan support, that's the PPP, the EIDL, the 7A, the 504, all the acronyms under the sun. And we provide financial packaging assistance. We are an important connection to other collaborating partners in the community, such as the Pikes Peak Workforce Center, which provided such needed help for those that were becoming unemployed or couldn't find work. The Better Business Bureau of Southern Colorado, Office of Economic Development and International Trade, and support for local grant funds. We provide daily outreach to our clients and digital media followers in the thousands, daily outreach to minority business chambers, and we created a response guide in the SBDC network. Our COVID relief team is comprised of so many different consultants with so much expertise, navigators for just all the different programs, generalists, cybersecurity experts, real estate experts, public information officers, people that can tell you how to tell your story and how you support the community. County and city representation, also inclusive of the Southern Colorado Business Partnership, which is incredibly important because that includes all of the chambers in our region, the minority chambers, the Better Business Bureau, the Visit COS, and the Black Business Network. So reaching our minority chambers was incredibly important during this time. And of course, the RISE Coalition, which supports Southeast Colorado Springs. We were fortunate to receive funding from the CARES Act, some from the Small Business Administration and some from El Paso County, and we couldn't be more thankful to the both of them. With that money, we were able to do the following to respond to our community small business needs. Create the Recovery and Resiliency Series, webinars and, and consulting provided in both English and Spanish. We created and implemented an eight-week strategic planning series for those that receive grants from the Enterprise Zone Grant Fund. We are creating more programming for nonprofits, standing up additional support in the Southeast with a five-part series. We work with Alliance for Kids for early childhood education and those daycares that had to shut down and so we're trying to bring them back. We were partners with the Pikes Peak Regional Office of Emergency Management for thermometer distribution and currently we're doing a mass distribution with the Colorado Springs Chamber and EDC. 
We are part of several recovery teams uh, throughout the region, from Manitou to Colorado Springs, but most currently the small business recovery and entrepreneurship team. Second obnoxious slide of my presentation. This is just a quick snapshot to show you how many resiliency series we, even, we put together. Everything from PPP loan navigation to cybersecurity scams and threats. We created an on-demand library. And this next quote is just a beautiful quote provided by Jason Wells, owner of Armadillo Ranch in Manitou Springs, another client of ours. So bear with me as I read it, but it's a good one. Absent the monumental advantages enjoyed by shareholder-backed corporations, small businesses live in an inherently precarious existence. When presented with additional hurdles imposed by unavoidable outside disruptions, the realities of their delicate survival are amplified exponentially. During such times, concepts such as creativity, flexibility, and adaption already crucial hallmarks of any successful small enterprise become that much more important to continuing viability of today's small business. Outside assistance often stands not just as welcome relief, but rather an essential lifeline. I love that last line because it really speaks to how our community came together in the time of need, more so than I ever thought we could. And it's because of this, it's because of the need of the small business that we did that. All right, so now what is our economic impact from all of the recovery programs and how the SBDC responded? So as you can see here for 2020 fiscal year, most of our work, the big green section was COVID-19 relief. When you drill down, you can see that it, it included support for the Small Business Administration's economic injury disaster loans, PPP loans, general disaster support very much financing and capital was our focus. So, so far for the year, this is our economic impact. This does not include our final surveying at the end of the year in which our numbers will go up, but for now, our client count of actual active clients, that's two or more sessions, is 664. We've serviced our clients with about 1,500 client sessions, over 2,000 consulting hours, supported with total capital of 7,582, sales increase of over $2 million, jobs supported of over 5,000, and that's for clients with two sessions or more. Our client annual sales are uh, $1.5 billion, government contracts over 6 million. We've conducted about 148 events and workshops for education this year, servicing over 4,000 attendees. Okay, so now with all of that, it's time to talk a little bit about the celebration, the silver lining, and how our community is really pumped up to move our community forward with innovation, celebration, and business pivots. These are some of the success stories we've been telling, and there's plenty more on our website, pikespeaksbdc.org. Airsport, Airsport, how they've pivoted twice during the pandemic. Go West Camps, really hard decisions so that they can come back full-fledged next summer. Red Leg Brewing Company, an expansion story, a huge expansion story, putting us on the map with, a, with an amazing brewery. Jewel PR. 2020 Small Business Week was an unprecedented year. We made a conscious decision, the Better Business Bureau and the SBDC, to not cancel any events. It was not the time to cancel events for small business. It is the time to move forward and show small business how we have to pivot too. And it was a time to celebrate small business and educate small business. So we pushed forward. And thanks to Steve Weed Media, who's here with us today, we were able to reach over 11,000 and, and at least 5,000 500 unique viewers throughout the week. We changed the food truck cook-off, which brings 3,000 people together at the World Arena to a guide to help people find food trucks in our community, which is good through April. We assisted with a number of amazing grant and loan programs that our community came to the table with. And the ones that we were involved with were the Paso County Economic Development, Enterprise Zone Business Relief Fund, the Regional Business Relief Fund, which you'll hear more about from Crystal Latier here in a minute, the Energized Colorado Gap Fund, Small Business Loans, and the Climber Fund, which is coming soon. Of course, the celebrations. 
I just love what Susan Edmondson has been doing with the downtown partnership and the dining, dine out downtown. It's just beautiful to see people out there supporting their small businesses and eating together in broad daylight and in a safe way. Our celebrations for City of Champions, the opening of the United States Olympic and Paralympic Museum. And of course, all the innovation in small business, e-commerce, curbside delivery, drive-through windows, online education, and of course, virtual sales. Here's another quote from one of our clients, Lynn Jones in Woodland Park. She owns Colorado Gear Lab. The worst thing a small business can do is nothing. It's what drove us to have an online presence. I felt like I was doing what was in my control to keep this business alive and viable for our consigners and our community. With that said, how are small businesses moving forward? What are we doing to move forward? Well, we're thinking about things differently, aren't we? Nothing will ever be the same. So the long-term business recovery plan that we're working on together under the business recovery and entrepreneurship team includes a bundle up for small business campaign, a cold weather toolkit for our small business community, reimagining office space and talent attraction. Of course, through all of this, the Pikes Peak SBDC, we have not stopped doing what we always do because you know what celebration is that even though we see so much devastation in our community, we have hundreds starting businesses, innovative businesses during the hardest time in years. So it's really exciting to see how that's going to pan out. So we couldn't stop our regular programs. So everything from creative uh, courses for creatives, cybersecurity, we run the statewide program, minority informed series, and small business real talks. So don't forget about your small business community and don't forget about your small business because right now is the time to work on your business because right now, specifically for these two upcoming events, cyber threats are at their worst. They're preying on businesses that are vulnerable. So the Cybersecurity Statewide Summit is coming up on October 15th and our Statewide Veteran Small Business Conference is coming up on November 5th. We know small businesses are hurting so we've provided these workshops and events for free for the rest of the year. Please sign up at pikespeaksvdc.org. With that said, thank you so much for joining us for the State of Small Business event. Please follow us, educate your small business, educate others by finding us on our website and all of our social media platforms. Thank you so much for being here today. <laughs>